أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to my Ramadan series Understanding Quran with Nafisa So as you guys know we are looking at Surah and Nisa and we are on verse 140 So that's where we're going to begin today's video with inshallah So without any further ado, let's begin He has already revealed to you in the book that when you hear Allah's revelations being denied or ridiculed then do not sit in that company unless they engage in a different topic or else you will be like them. Surely Allah will gather the hypocrites and dis disbelievers all together in hell. The hypocrites are those who wait to see what happens to you. So if Allah grants you victory, they say to you, were we not on your side? But if the disbelievers have a share of victory, they say to them, did we not have the advantage over you, yet we protected you from the believers? So Allah will judge between all of you on the day of judgment, and Allah will never grant the disbelievers a way over the believers. Surely the hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but he outwits them. When they stand up for prayer, they do it half-heartedly, only to be seen by people, hardly remembering Allah at all. Torn between belief and disbelief, belonging neither to these believers nor to those disbelievers, and whoever Allah leaves astray, you will never find for them a way. O oh, believers, do not take disbelievers as allies instead of believers. Would you like to give Allah solid proof against yourselves? Hmm. Surely the hypocrites will be in the lowest depth of the fire and you will never find for them any helper. Except those who repent, mend their ways, hold fast to Allah and are sincere in their devotion to Allah. They will be with the believers and Allah will grant the believers a great reward. Why should Allah punish you if you are grateful and faithful? Allah is ever appreciative, all knowing. So I'm going back up. To verse 140 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has already revealed the book right to all of us right and so for us to hear Allah's revelation being denied or ridiculed we should not sit in the company of those who mock Allah's revelations those who mock Islam, we should not sit in their company unless they engage in a different topic, unless they change the topic. Meaning that if you and I are in an environment where people are dissing Islam, we are to remove ourselves away from that. Meaning your presence is a way of you demonstrating your, your comfort with what they're discussing. If you're uncomfortable by what they're saying, Leave is Allah's guidance for us. Allah said we should do that and we should not sit in their company unless they change the topic. When they change the topic, we can sit in their company. That's even if it's necessary for us to be in their company. Those people are not our people. Let them do their way and for us our way. Everyone stay in their lane. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely Allah will grant the hypocrites and the, the disbelievers all together, he will gather them up all together and their place is in the hellfire. Then Allah says, the hypocrites are those who wait to see what happens to you. So if victory comes to you, they're like, oh, but we were with you. We helped you to be successful. So come on, give us, give us part of this share of this goodness that you have. But when the disbelievers are successful, they go to the disbelievers and say, come on, we helped you against those believers, right? So we're, we're a part of you. They, are, they think they're fooling Allah, not knowing that they are only fooling themselves. Only fooling themselves. Allah goes on to say, surely the hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, outwits them. Meaning Allah is, is cleverer than them. He plans better than them. Allah is everything better than the hypocrites, right? When they stand up for prayers, Allah says they do, they do it half-heartedly, Right? They only pray to be seen by people and they hardly remember Allah at all. Subhanallah. When we are in our homes, do we pray regularly? When no one is looking at us, do we pray with the same level of concentration as when 
people are looking at us? Or are we trying to pretend to be more righteous because of the fact that people can see us? This is the issue that I have with judging people by their external. I'm sitting here with a jilbab. You might think I'm better than a sister who doesn't wear hijab. But me wearing a jilbab doesn't say much. It says something, but it doesn't say much for who I am as a Muslim. Because the jilbab is what people can see. If I wear niqab, that's what people can see. And yeah, we're humans. We judge by what we can see. But Allah is the one that truly knows who is more rightly guided and who is more, who is more on the right path than the other. The external things, judging by the external things, doesn't tell you much. The hypocrite can stand, mashallah, perfectly to pray, looking all mashallah, mashallah. But in their hearts, Allah knows that they are a hypocrite. So they stand to pray, only to be seen by men. So people can say, mashallah, what a righteous person this person is. Allah says he knows what goes on in their hearts. And this um, surah talks a lot about hypocrites. But I want to make a point also that, brothers and sisters, it's not for us to go around calling people hypocrites unless they show clear signs consistently that they are hypocrites. Because another thing people do, I don't know why, maybe they do this because it makes them feel better about themselves. So you see someone good at doing goodness, right? And you're like, well, I don't care if they're doing the goodness. Who knows if they're doing it for the sake of Allah? Or you see someone who does goodness and then they have a flaw or they make a mistake. Then you say, see, that person's a hypocrite. It's not for you to judge who the hypocrite is. Allah says he knows who they are. Because it's about it, what's in the inside. It may show itself up on the outside. But I also want us to be aware that every single human of us can make mistakes. Every single human of us. And this reminds me of a time. There is a sheikh who is very popular right now. Like... His, his community, they are, they, are, they are popping right now. Like their videos are getting views and they are making it right now. But there was a time when he said something and he made a mistake through what he said. And the sheikh had to come and make a public announcement to say how he was sorry and make amends. But at that time, there were many Muslims who just cancelled him. But today, he's one of the biggest advocates for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. A lot of you know who I'm talking about. And when I look at his situation, I say, Allah Akbar. Allah knew that he made a genuine mistake, that he was sincere. But if he hadn't overcome the, what the people had to say about him, because people were jumping to it. People were like, oh no, he's a hypocrite. He's this, that, and the other. If Allah hadn't given him the ability to continue, we wouldn't have somebody who is standing so firmly for our brothers and sisters in Palestine today. Today. So it's possible that we can all make mistakes, but Allah can still use us for much goodness, much goodness. But that is for the one who makes a mistake and recognizes that they've made a mistake and then they sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is always open to repentance. So I don't want you guys hearing all of this and feeling like I have to be perfect all of the time. And if I'm not perfect all the time, then I'm a hypocrite. No, if you make the mistake as human is to be expected, you will. But you have to change. You have to change. May Allah help us to change for the better. Ameen. So Allah goes on to say, torn between belief and disbelief, belonging neither to these believers, meaning the hypocrites, they don't belong here, nor do they belong here. They're just hopping in and out as it suits them, deceiving both, both well, actually deceiving themselves, right? So Allah says, and whoever Allah leaves astray, you will never find for them a way. And this is another reminder us to say, we don't guide who we want to be guided. Rather, Allah guides whom he wills. You know, when I make videos like this, I know they don't get as many views as some of my other content. But I always say to myself that Allah will guide to these type of videos the people that he chooses. You watching right now, Allah chose you to be here to hear this message. It was by Allah's permission and by his guidance that you are here hearing this. It is a gift. And Allah doesn't choose to give that gift to everyone. So we have to understand and see Allah's favours upon us. So Allah says, O believers, do not take disbelievers again as allies instead of the believers. 
Would you like to give Allah solid proof against yourselves? Meaning that when you take the disbelievers as your close bosom friends and you leave the, the believers, you are actually demonstrating, you are giving evidence and showing Allah that in your heart you may be a hypocrite. Because how can you prefer those who don't believe in Allah to those who believe in Allah? If there is nothing in common, the fact that you guys have Islam is the biggest thing you can have in common. Because that's a friendship that can last beyond this life. That's your souls becoming friends. So you may become friends in the hereafter. So your friendship actually benefits you instead of go against you. Allah, so Allah's reminding us, don't, don't provide proof and evidence against yourself by showing yourself up, by choosing the disbelievers instead of the believers. And in real terms, guys, like it, it just makes sense. Like it makes sense. When I was young, I went to a non-Islamic secondary school. And primary school too was non-Islamic. And my college was still non-Islamic. And my university was non-Islamic. But especially when I was younger, like, I had a lot of non-Muslim friends. But over the years, and they're not bad people. Like, through the way that they behave and everything, they are not bad people. Honestly, if we saw one another right now, some of my girlfriends from when I was in primary school, secondary school, would probably give each other a hug or say hi and, and stuff, right? But as I grew closer to Allah, in my opinion, and Allah knows best, it, it, that, those friendships just kind of naturally died down because they would go to church on a Sunday. I have nothing to do with church. I'm in the masjid, right? I am going to lectures. I want people I can go to Islamic lectures with, right? To see Mufti Menk and see all these other lecturers and stuff. It's Ramadan, I'm fasting, so I can't just hopping here and there to these different parties and whatnot. So naturally, the friendship just kind of died down. And when we begin to follow Allah's way, you will find that, right? You'll find that your friendships with certain people will just naturally kind of fall away. But it doesn't mean you hate that person or that that person hates you. It's just like the trajectory of your life now begins to change, okay? And you will prefer to be with people who are like you. Like, we all love communities. We like to be with those who are like us, who remind us of ourselves in some way or another. So if you're a true believer, then surely you would be among the believers, right? So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do. He's asking us to demonstrate in our actions that we are believers. Then Allah says, surely the hypocrites will be in the lowest depth of the fire and you will never find for them any helper. I've said that multiple videos so far since we've been talking about the hypocrites that they are among the people who will be in the deepest level of the hellfire. The hellfire is not all the same level. It, the deeper you go, the worse of the people you find in the in the depth of the hellfire. You know, we're talking like the fir firauns and of our times and stuff like that. They are in the deep, the deepest pit basically with shaitan and his associates. And then, of course, according to our sins and according to our bad deeds, may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from entering into the hellfire. Amin. So Allah says that except those who repent and mend their ways, always Allah always brings back repentance to us. Right? He does remind us of the punishment, but he always brings back repentance. So Allah then says, why should Allah punish you if you are grateful and faithful? Allahu Akbar. In my femininity group, every Friday we have the, uh, we have the sisters, you know, talk about the things that they are grateful for. Because we want to be women who practice gratitude. It's, it's an amazing thing to practice gratitude. And some say it doesn't matter who cares if you say five things if you're not following. Of course, you need to follow Allah's way. That's the biggest way you can show gratitude to Allah. But also, by saying it, it means there's a recognition. You have to think about it before it comes out of your mouth. So there is that recognition. And that's a good thing to do because sometimes all we're remembering is all of our problems and all the things that's not good in our lives. We fail to recognize the blessings in our lives. Allah says, if you are grateful, and indeed, only few people are able to achieve this gratitude. Allah says in another verse of the Quran, only few of my slaves are grateful. Few of them. He didn't say most of them. He said few of them are grateful. We want to be among the grateful. And Allah says, if you are grateful and you're faithful, meaning you don't associate partners with him in any way, why should he punish you? Allah has made injustice, forbidden injustice to his slaves from himself. Meaning Allah will never be unjust to you. If you're good to him, Allah will be good to you. And Allah is ever appreciative, all-knowing. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, that is where we're going to end today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up as per usual. Comment in the comment section down below how you're finding the surah. How are you connecting with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's definitely been a blessing for me just sitting here and just... Just, I feel like it's just a moment sometimes with my fellow sisters who love the things that I love as well right like I love to talk about relationships but I love to talk about my deen more and I really like it that I have you sisters here with me and brothers perhaps who also share in the love of the deen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us Ameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh